NFTs on YouTube. <clears throat> NFT. Okay. Hmm. Do you have an NFT? I do have have a few. I also have one. Okay. It's called <laughs> Goose Ass. Okay. <laughs> it's it's worth a couple of Ethereum. It's not it's on open sea. Nice. Uh, and this is mine. Okay. Why did you buy it? it, it goose ass? Yeah. Oh, I'm a proud owner of Goose Ass. Well, okay, now you notice that he said I'm a proud owner, meaning he may not have bought it. He may have just been gifted this this uh this NFT. Um anyway, let's keep going. I'm I'm gonna talk about NFTs here in a second. Why did you buy it? Well, because of its <laughs> intrinsic value. Okay. And I think when our one percent mm. overlords are finally done running the scene, this is how we will be trading our currencies. Now, I hope that he's right, but um, he's about to get into the uh, basically the classism that he's seen within the NFT industry. And I think it's important because we do need to discuss this. Giving power back to uh -huh. the man. Uh -huh. So I think is that part of why you're bringing NFTs to YouTube? No, <laughs> no, that's 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 not why right. I can tell you why. Please. OK, so first of all, we are seeing that creators are um selling their videos and memes as nfts right so like david after dentist for example sold for mm. um was like eleven thousand dollars for nice example. so we do see many creators engaging in this and you know that that means that like the dad who took that video and had it up um had it minted on the blockchain and then when and then he sold that nft to somebody um i don't know necessarily that he gave them access to like the rights to it, you know what I mean? Like the actual admin properties. What he's about to discuss is that the person that bought Charlie bit my finger actually deleted it, which is really weird. Like that's a very weird choice. Um, I think that that kind of highlights a lot of the uh, art snob elitism that is going on that has gone on since, I mean, it's always been this way. You look at artists like uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat and he was out there creating amazing works um I mean, similar, and uh, obviously Charlie bit my finger is just a video of two kids, but like he was creating things that were natural, that were flowing freely through the art space. And you see how his work was kind of, I mean, in his, in his life, he's one of the few artists who was, who was lucky enough to see some of his, his success, but a lot of his work was just kind of, kind of thrown by the wayside or, or it, this, this kind of thing happened. It was overvalued by the bourgeoisie to the point that his, his actual life was affected negatively. And then also there's the idea of the, some of these artists fully just like dying in abject poverty while their pieces are selling for tens of thousands of dollars. So art has always been this weird kind of space where value is malleable. Um, but as far as, as far as Charlie bit my finger, as far as NFTs, um, this is a new, kind of uh, expression I feel like for for someone to be able to stamp their their art onto the internet and just be like this is the stamp like if you want to buy it you can but you got to pay so let's go into this probably bit my finger 300k they deleted it it's another second example yeah. and there, there are many many more and if creators are selling their videos as nfts then like that's an important form of monetization and it would not be it. I, I don't think it would be good if that all happened on another platform mm -hmm. for many reasons. Like a, it's a form of monetization and we mm -hmm. want to provide the best monetization to all creators. But the second reason is, is that we also are in the best position to verify which assets actually belong to which creators. Mm -hmm. So, like and that makes sense to me. She's saying that because they have the admin privileges to look at all these videos, they know exactly like, okay, you're selling a video that actually, that you actually recorded and uploaded yourself, as opposed to people who are doing uh, NFT scams, which is a legit thing. People are grabbing other people's creations and just minting it on the blockchain as if it was their own and trying to sell it off and make money. And people have already made a shitload of money doing this. Um, in that way, I think that it's, so far there's not enough She's discussing security and why I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm not trying to do Susan dirty like this. Be a there you go. That's all right. That's a better face. I think maybe, I don't know. <laughs> um, what she's saying though, is that they can, they can verify who owns what video, which means that they can tell exactly where the NFT should go. Um, the thing is, is that she says that this is going to help small creators, uh, you know, make money off of their NFTs. Problem for you if some other third-party site were selling 
your videos without knowing that it belonged to you. Or you my wouldn't, goose ass. Yes, or your goose ass. Well, your goose ass, I don't think is really like, I don't think that's really core uh, uh, content that belongs to you. But getting there. Um, okay, but anyway, <laughs> even your, like, look, if you want to invest in your goose ass, like, <laughs> yeah. then go ahead. Yes. Yeah, and okay. we would want to be there to protect you with uh -huh. it. And if you want to sell your goose ass, then like, yes, we would want to make sure that you are selling it and not someone else is selling it. Sure. And with all the investment that we have from Content ID, we are in the best position to act to know which content belongs to which creators. True. And so I think okay. we should explore. So, so far, she's giving the argument, and it's good. It's a good. It's a good talking point that like there does need to be a an administration an administrative role here where someone's saying like this art belongs to this person. So it would be a problem if someone else was selling your content. And they would just not have the ability to know what belonged to whom. Mm, so um, you guys are like the people who know everything. So you can also easily facilitate the sale of it. Yeah. And that do the sense. right thing for creators because we want to make sure that if it's a, is, if it turns out that this is an important form of monetization, we want to be there to support you and make sure that your content isn't being, you know, basically stolen and sold somewhere else. And that makes sense. Um, that makes sense to me. The second thing I'd say about oh, it sorry. is we do think that NFTs will enable new forms of um, monetization for creators. So, that, for example, <sighs> we've seen creators, um, like we've seen various musicians, and I think that, you know, it can work for creators too, where they will sell um, a few singles initially. Mm -hmm. um, um, with NFTs and various like perks associated with that, whether that's like additional merch or I don't know, um, time or, you know, side benefits. So she's discussing the, like, Oh my God, I keep doing Susan so dirty. Um, so she's discussing the fact that people are making merch bundles where you can buy basically an NFT that someone has minted. And then also you'll get some physical items so that you don't necessarily feel like you you know, didn't get anything or, or like you, you're holding on to just like a, a receipt basically. Cause an NFT really is, it's a non fungible token. You don't actually, I mean, you're more than welcome to print out the painting or, you know, download the video that you have the NFT for or whatever. Um, but technically you don't actually own the art itself. You own the, the rights to the art online. And what's interesting is that I feel like this represents kind of, um, for one, it represents a really scary uh, outlook on false scarcity. Like we've gotten to the point now where um, it feels kind of like they're trying to convince us that there's just nothing left in the real world for us to have. And so they're just like, ah, uh, you know, just focus on the digital stuff. Just focus on like cryptocurrency and NFTs. That way you can own some things in the digital space. But there's more than enough physical things to own as well. So this needs to be, I feel like this whole thing definitely d needs to be figured out. You know what I mean? Um, as a way of fundraising and, and raising more money for their community. Mm -hmm. um, and then okay. funding that. So I guess that's a, that's a decent time to discuss this. So <sighs> what she's saying is that if you're minting NFTs nowadays, it is a good, it's a, there's a good chance that you're going to... Um, and you're going to be ma making money as a small creator. But the problem that I've encountered is that I don't really know how to promote myself as a small creator. So without a promoter, all I can do is like show you guys this video and then explain to you that I've been minting these. So I found this, this uh, website called Voice. They claim to be, if I can go back to it, um, it says celebrating Earth Month, mint an NFT, plant a tree, hashtag clean NFT. So the reason that I picked this one is because one of my main concerns about NFTs is blockchain infrastructure and the uh, emissions that go into powering that. Uh, some folks m may not know, but most of our electricity still to this day is from coal. We're, bu we're burning coal in, um, in power plants and that's causing a lot of emissions. And so that's adding to, to global warming. It's adding to climate change. It's going to be really bad for us if we don't stop. So one of the first things that I thought when I found NFTs was like, oh, shit, the blockchain is already so bad for the planet. I can't do this. This this company um, has been very reassuring in, in telling me that this is not this is not the case. Um, they do have a carbon neutral blockchain, apparently. Um, we will see. Ooh, this is beautiful. Wow, if I had a hundred bucks, I'd do this. Um, so yeah, this is a carbon neutral uh, NFT minting service. 
It is free to sign up currently. They might end up starting to charge for it because I'm sure they're going to get a lot more um, traffic. But basically, if you're an artist who's making images, uh, I don't think that they can host videos, but if you're making paintings or images or photo, you know, photo edits, this is a website where you can start a profile um, and you can actually mint your own NFTs, which is amazing. And I will show you this here, voice.com forward slash gummy worm gym is my voice profile. Um, here's me in my VR headset. Uh, <clears throat> so as you can see, I did a little, I did a little bio here. Adam Poole is a Yurok and Maidu man living in Humboldt County, California. His history is tied to the land and the uh, effects of colonization on his people and the marginalized communities of Humboldt County. Many of his creations express a cultural pain, an expression of vision that is palpable to any observer. Influences range from Dolly and Picasso to the films of Nolan, Fincher, and Tarantino. The art expresses starkly contrasting themes of culture and aesthetic. So I wrote this out myself. Um, if you're not the sort of person who's like really wordy, feel free to either you can either you can even reach out to me if you have something that you want to you, you want to put on your profile. Let me know and I can maybe even tell you how to say it. But um, basically what I'm doing here is just kind of talking myself up. Uh, this is not it's not like disingenuous or anything. All of this is true. Um, there's actually stuff in here that I didn't mention. I didn't mention that my grandmother is a incredibly uh, prolific Native American artist that, you know, I could I could easily just be like, oh, I want to ride off the coattails of my... What the heck? <laughs> That's the wrong Judith Lowry. Here is my... Um, these are my grandma's paintings. She does really good stuff. Um, yeah, she's been painting for a very long time. As you can see, a lot of them uh, fit the theme of Native American um, culture. This is her when she was younger. Um, this is one of my favorite paintings of hers, actually. So good, right? Um, I might actually save this. I might actually save this painting. I don't feel bad about saving it. It's my grandma's painting. If she had the ability to just, like, print it out and give it to me as a file, I feel like she might. Although, I don't know. I haven't talked to her in a long time. This is rad. Yeah, some of her arts, some of her paintings are just absolutely astounding. You know what I mean? This is great. So this is an important piece for my family because it has a lot of family history in it. Um, oh, where is it? There. So this is interesting. This is, okay. This is simultaneous. So all of my family on my dad's side looks very similar. So this is um, simultaneously a picture of my uh, great-grandmother. And also it looks a lot like my grandmother, Judy, who is the, the person who, who drew this or who, who painted this, I should say. This is my great-grandfather, Leonard, when he was a child. Um, it's really cool to see this because this is a picture of him as a, as a little kid. But like he is technically the artist's father. So it's the artist is drawing a picture of their dad as a as a child, and he is uh, he grows up later on to become the most decorated Native American to fight in World War II, um, and then this is his parents. So this is my great great grandma and grandpa uh, looking at him. So this is a this is a prolific. I just realized I'm using my mouse to highlight all this stuff, and you can't see, but you know what I'm doing. I'm going left to right. We got my grandma on the left, we got my great-grandpa in the middle, and then we got my great-great-grandpa and great-great-grandma on the right. So, I come from a long line of artists, but I don't want to, like, you know, I'm not trying to, like, clout shark that kind of stuff. So, anyway, here's my paintings. They're not as good as my grandma's, in my opinion, um, but they're working. I'm working on it. Um, so... The idea is I wanted to put them up because I worked hard enough on them that I feel like they should be at least um, at least actual painting prices. I made them a hundred, so they're they're fairly cheap for paintings. Um, I do think it's kind of it's it's like it's a it's a hard balance to to value your art without devaluing it, and also to. Um, you know, to, to put it out there in a way that you don't feel is like pretentious and be like, oh, I, you know, I worked really hard on this, so you better pay. You know what I mean? Like this is this is what I'm talking about. We're we're at a point, though, where I feel like this 
I mean, these have been up for a long time. These these paintings have all been up here for over two or three months now. Um, this one I put up kind of kind of recently actually, but like these are all paintings that I've that I've done. I love this one actually. I worked really hard on this one, and I'm I'm proud of it. Chill, dude. You're gonna get fed. Hey, quit. You're gonna you're gonna get fed. Um, let's see. So yeah, I worked hard on that one. As you can see, the skeleton using the bullhorn. It's got a lot of, um, it's got a lot of symbolism. Uh, the roots coming out of the feet represent your connection to the earth. Uh, the spaceships represent the billionaires who are currently trying to leave the earth with all of the resources that we need to survive. The bubble kind of represents like life and the way that it's, it's very, um, fragile uh, and it might pop at any minute, you know what I mean? Um, so these are the NFTs. I, I minted one that is a photograph, and it's this. I've edited the photograph so that it's it's me, as you can see. But I made this one a 1,000 because um, in Native American culture, it's believed that if you're giving, in some cultures, not all of them, but in a lot of them, it's believed that if you're giving your face away, um, that it's just, it's basically, it's incredibly valuable. It's something, it's a part of you. There were cultures that said that you shouldn't give images of yourself away or let other people take images of you. Um, so as a result, I just thought, well, it is easy to mint photographs, and I do want to make a nice photograph, um, but I didn't know exactly what to do. So I did this. That way, if and when this stuff ever takes off, because, you know, this is the kind of stuff that later on, if you're a painter and you start doing this stuff, not to get too cryptic and grim, but this is the kind of thing where, like, if you pass away and your paintings are still up here um and you make sure that your your account information is left with your family like there's a chance you know what i mean there's a chance that this could this could be one of those posthumous situations because paintings are like that um so yeah these have been up for a few months it's a hundred bucks each i think they're pretty cheap to be honest for what they are um eventually i will be making because because this is just me developing my style and developing what i'm going to do with my with my art. Um, I'm just giving them like starter prices, but eventually I do want to have these paintings, um, just evolve into something that is so, uh, so good that people will be willing to pay like a, a really good premium. Cause currently I'm still broke as a joke. I am literally the most starving artist. I know <laughs> I haven't paid my rent in like over a year. Like it's, it's bad. So hopefully maybe this kind of thing will, will help. Um, but you know, you just got to keep exploring and keep doing everything that you can for what you got. Um, at some point I need to put my banner up. So that's how that's, that's why this part of the video literally like affected me so, so closely because I'm listening to Ludwig say something that I absolutely agree with, which is currently NFTs are a fucking, like, it's like a Ponzi scheme. I, I shouldn't say that, but it's like, it's still an elitist space that you still have to be a rich person with a lot of money in order to start making money off NFTs. Me as a poor starving artist with absolutely no money and a VR headset to make some paintings. Um, I have very little chance unless like maybe if maybe this clip will take off and people will go here and buy these for a hundred bucks or maybe someone will see it one day soon and just be like, Oh, this is the kind of stuff. Well, what I'm banking on is that maybe one day I will make some art that is so good that people will be like, damn, this dude's a prolific artist, like, you know, like Basquiat. And then they'll they'll go back here and they'll look at these and they'll be like, oh, wow, you know, you can actually purchase his early works for pretty cheap. Um, <laughs> also, I, I try to make sure that I give them all really cool titles so you can kind of tell what I'm feeling at the time. This one is called We Should Be So Lucky, and it's about um, the earth watching us as we are destroying each other and going to war and uh and the sacred things of the that that humans have created before us are slowly but surely being destroyed and you know um all of that kind of leads to this apocalyptic vision that i have so um the first series of nfts that i'm minting is called the doomsday series and it's just because i for a good long time i was having i wasn't even having dreams i was just having thoughts nonstop about kind of the end of the world and catastrophizing that a little bit. And so instead of just sitting there and dwelling on that kind of shit, I decided maybe I needed to um, just try and get it out on canvas. You know what I mean? So 
flashes in light. This was funny. Um, I didn't know until I was done with it, and I was like, oh, this skeleton, Hella has eyelashes, which doesn't make sense for a skull. So I just thought it was funny. It, this really, this piece actually represents me, I feel like, in a lot of ways, because this is Hella me. Like, I am morbid and kind of depressing and oftentimes I really do love to shock people I like relying on shock value kind of stuff um, not relying on it but I love the I love the dynamic of shock value um, but then also I try to be happy and pretty and I want good things in the world so this painting um, represents me in a lot of ways um, it's it's still part of the doomsday series but it's it's just a it's almost like a self-portrait you know what I mean um, also skulls will probably end up being a theme in my art because as I've said, a lot of this has to do with me thinking about what's going to happen posthumously. I think a lot about what's going to happen after I'm not here anymore, which might be morbid, but, um, it just is what it is. Sometimes I get really fucking scared when I start thinking about what if death is painful, like not to freak you guys out watching the video, but I have this thought of like, okay. Here's one thing that's absolutely guaranteed. We don't have a choice. We will die one day, right? Our bodies will die. There's a chance that maybe we can upload our minds before that happens. Who knows where the technology is going to go. But our bodies will die one day. <coughs> so if our bodies are going to die one day and there's nothing that we can do about it, there's always the potential that, like, it might hurt. It might not be a nice feeling when we die. <laughs> the good news there is that when you die... I'm, I, I truly believe that the instant that you actually are dead, instant relief. You know what I mean? Any pain you're going through, any of that, it's all fine as soon as you die. So, anyway, that's the way I feel about that. That's why I'm, that's, that's why I'm recording as much as I can. That's why I'm making a YouTube video. That's why I'm doing all this stuff. Because I feel like even if nobody tunes in today, even if nobody ever watches me while I'm alive, maybe someday, some you know, 30, 40 years from now, I'll be long gone or I'll be, you know, 50 years from now. I don't know. However many years from now, I'll be long gone and people will be like, damn, remember that dude, Gummy Worm Jim? <laughs> Let's finish this up though. I want to, I want to finish this section on NFTs just so you guys get an idea of what I was talking about and what, now that you know that I am an artist who creates NFTs, listen to this conversation a little bit deeper and think about this as from the perspective of someone who made a painting and is trying to sell it. And I think that, you know, it can work for creators too, where they will sell um, a few singles initially um, um, with NFTs and various like perks associated with. Now she has a she's she's describing the fact that you can sell NFTs single or as a bundle. So currently all of these are listed as singles, um, but I do someday plan to release um, packages like big packages of paintings that I put out. Maybe I'll do them by the month. If I if I can get to the point where I'm putting them out really quickly, I would uh, not really quickly, but um, if I can get to the point where I'm putting them out fast enough for me to be satisfied with the art, but still fast enough to have shit going up, you know, fairly re re uh, regularly, then I will start doing like monthly collections. I'll be like, you know, the June collection, the June 2020 collection, or whatever the fuck, you know what I mean? But that's what she's talking about there. It's that whether that's like additional merch or. I don't know, um, time or, you know, side benefits, um, as a way of fundraising and, and raising more money for their community. Mm -hmm. Um, and then funding that for an album like Tory Lanez, for example, did something like that, um, that raised hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, we want to, we really like, if it turns <laughs> out that also Susan dropping Tory Lanez right now, that was a, it's a strain, like. I know that rich people are a little bit out of touch, but that's a strangely out of touch one to drop. Like, you know, I'm really concerned about brand safety and promoting myself. But anyway, Tory Lanez, you know what I mean? The dude that shot Megan Thee Stallion. NFTs enable new forms uh, for creators to be able to raise money, to be able to... Do I have to say allegedly? Allegedly? Allegedly shot Megan Thee Stallion. I don't know if I have to say allegedly or not. I'm pretty sure he's like either been convicted or is in court for... Allegedly shot Megan Thee Stallion, Tory Lanez did get paid to have a business then it's important for us to be there and like at the end of the day what youtube does is like we're a platform that distributes content and does monetization true and if nfts is an important part of that equation then we think we should be there 
Are you I, concerned at all about the dumb actors and the liability and getting in a CoffeeZilla vi video where he like roasts you for bad NFTs and, and that? Now, what he's still talking about here is the fact that people, uh, like I said, people are stealing art and minting it on the blockchain. Not just stealing art, they're stealing random weird shit. Like people will steal a meme and mint it on the blockchain as if... Like, you know how you, you're scrolling through, like, your social media feed and you'll see something that makes you kind of breathe out of your nose a little bit harder than regular? Like, hmm, that's funny. And then you, like, tap and hold and then you hit save and you save it to your phone. There are people who do that, but instead of just saving it to their phone, they straight up mint it to the blockchain and try to sell it as an NFT because they're, like he said, bad actors. People who deserve to have CoffeeZilla's videos made about them. Um... So that's an interesting phenomena as well with NFTs that should be documented. That stuff? Is that like a fear? Is that like an internal? I don't think it's not like we're afraid of it. It's just that we think it's a it's going to be a opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we're, we're like, wouldn't you want us as your platform to be invested? Here's something I like about Susan. And I'm, I'm it's, it's kind of weird because normally I don't like the CEO archetype. I don't like ultra capitalists. I don't like people who... Um, who don't necessarily acknowledge how much wealth and influence they have. And I feel like Susan kind of falls into that sometimes. But here's what I really like about Susan. She's really down to earth and human. And it seems like she is willing to talk to creators, which is really, really nice. Um, what did she just say? She said something that really triggered me. Are you I concerned at all about the dumb actors and the liability and getting in a CoffeeZilla vi video where he like roasts you for bad NFTs and... And that stuff is that like a fear is that like an internal i don't think it's not like we're afraid of it it's just that we think it's a it's going to be a opportunity okay so that she's right like this is an opportunity it's an opportunity for folks who have the means to promote themselves um part of the reason that i'm streaming this and i'm going to make this into a little vod for the vod channel is because i want artists to understand that like you're still gonna have to do some hard footwork because this is not enough. I've I've put up I put up paintings. Maybe my paintings just aren't good enough yet. Maybe I have to keep keep developing my style. That's totally fine. Um, but what I'm saying is that just like streaming, just like every other thing right now, there has to be you have to figure out a way to tactfully um, promote yourself in a way that's not like overbearing, because that's really really clutch today. Like nowadays, when you go into a Discord or you go into a Reddit. There are so many rules about what you can post and where and who can post what. Um, to be honest, like my brain is fucking broken. I have some kind of undiagnosed neurodivergence that I'm hopefully getting diagnosed next week um, or soon. You know what I mean? And um, and so it's impossible for me to adhere to every single rule of a subreddit or of a Discord when they just keep changing. Like I go into a Discord and I'm like, hey, you guys, where do I promote my NFTs? And I just feel like most discords full of like gen z kids are just like fuck you get away from me we don't care you know what i mean it's like all right fine i'll just i'll just leave discord and, and and try to do this on my own so that's what i've been doing but that's exactly what i'm what i'm talking about here is that this is frustrating to hear people say like oh this is going to be a big opportunity for you like actually so far this has made me no money at all um it's which is fine it's fine that it's made me no money i just it's just wild to me that i haven't sold a single painting um, and NFTs for a while there, they were like, oh, NFTs are going to be the, the big thing, <sighs> but it's literally polarizing now. Um, there are, there are a shitload of gamers who are like, fuck NFTs, man. NFTs are a scam. Well, if they're a scam, please, please fall for this because I have no money. I have nothing. And this is not a scam. This is me making art to try and sell, uh, in the way that my family did before me. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we're, we're like, wouldn't you want us as your platform to be investing in new technologies where we could generate revenue for creators? I am and a bitter. Okay. So that's the part that I think is important here. So she's talking about the people who are investing in the server farms to host these NFTs and blockchains. Right. And on the one hand, she's right. Like we do want companies to be investing into this kind of thing so that creators can start doing it. On the other hand, they have to be super careful of how they do it because the way that NFTs have been marketed so far is just too out of touch. Like it's too cringy and boomery and not like it's not made for young people who are actually trying to spend their money on art. Um, 
<clears throat> that being said, I realize a big part of that is because young people these days don't have money for art. Like it's just not classism has, has kind of whittled us down through the generations. And as a millennial, I remember how fucking hard it was for me to find work, for me to find anything coming up as a teenager. So I can only imagine that for Gen Z, it's got to be possibly even harder. Uh, maybe now with technology, there are things that make that easier, but it's just my take on making money right now. Millionaire who's mad at other millionaires for how much millionaires want and how much more they get. And mm -hmm. I always feel I am and a bitter millionaire who's mad at other millionaires for how much millionaires want and how much more they get. And mm -hmm. I always feel like the rich get richer. And I feel like NFTs don't help what I view as the most important thing that you talked about uh -huh. earlier, which is small creators. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ludwig. He's exactly right. So one of the most important things about NFT technology is that it has the potential to redistribute wealth. There are people like, there's lots of people like me. If these, if you look at these paintings and you're like, oh, these are trash, that's totally fine. That doesn't, that doesn't even hurt my feelings really. This is art. It's subjective. If you don't want to buy these, don't buy these. But like, go look for some paintings that you want to buy. Go look for some art that you want to buy because I really do think that maybe there's a chance that this NFT thing could end up being a thing where you own something down the line that is actually valuable. It's actually really valuable, more so than this. You know what I mean? Like, think about it. If Walt Disney had minted the first frame of Mickey Mouse back then, and he had sold it for like two or three hundred bucks, people would have done it. I actually, I got a really funny story to tell you about this. One of my ex-girlfriends, her great great grandfather, gave Walt Disney, I think it was like ten or fifteen bucks, to get from from the East Coast to the West Coast of Cali of, of the United States. He just needed a train ticket. And so my, my ex-girlfriend's grandpa bought Walt Disney a, a train ticket. And when he got to California and he started his business, he told her grandpa, he said, you can have like some crazy shit. It was like 10% stock or something, or you can have your money back. And she is very angry to report that her grandpa took the money back and did not take 10% of Disney, which would now be worth like billions of dollars. So, um, so that's one of those things that like when I hear stories like that, I know that these kind of things happen. So I'm like, all right, when I mint a painting for a hundred bucks, there's a part of me that like my, my self-conscious, like my e my artist ego is like, ah, oh, nobody's going to pay a hundred bucks for this. Like, this is just a trash painting that you like threw together while you were like all up in your fields and trying to make, you know, trying to make art about the world that you lived in and <clears throat> whatever. Um, but I also know that maybe someday this will be something maybe like if I continue to create, if I continue to keep pushing and make things someday, I'm going to make something that's that's big enough that, that the world will notice. And then this stuff will be the stuff that people will look back at and be like, oh, you have an early gummy worm gym painting. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and it's not just me. I'm saying this for artists as well. If you're an artist and you're making art, do this, like mint your shit. Mint it, especially on voice, because if you're minting, uh, like I said, JPEG images or uh, any kind of any kind of 2D art, voice is is apparently incredibly ethical, which is really really nice. That's a really good feeling to know, because I was not going to do NFTs at all. Um, I was also under the under the impression that they are probably a scam. I didn't know anything about them for a good long time, uh, other than the fact that like people were trying to sell really shitty ones. Um, if you guys remember the bored ape thing and the fucking pixel punk bullshit, like people were trying to sell pit crews basically. Um, and you can, if by the way, don't do this, but you can go over here to pitcrew.me and you can just make any of these. Like, look, you, you click on one. Uh, I don't want that. You click on one. I'll show you exactly what, what some people are doing. And this is not okay. This is not art. This is stealing someone's art. In fact, Someone worked hard on this program. They drew out every single asset for this. And so to um, to render this and then mint it as, a, as an NFT, that's stealing. That's stealing from this person, which is why they have their name here. But what I was showing you is that there are people who are literally just going through and being like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it with elf ears, and I want these eyes, and I want uh, the, the, the X's on there, and then uh, I want the, you know, like this is... This is a thing that people are really doing. And let's make it like, let's make it cute like this with the, with the bruises. Let's make it crying. Uh, we'll give it like a, oh wait, no, no. We'll give it like a headband. We'll give it like some hair. You know what I'm saying? Like people are doing this exact thing 
which is not creating art, by the way. Like, I, you are creating art, but you're creating someone else's art. Someone else has given you the tools to make a custom PNG or avatar or, or JPEG, and you are using those tools um, to make an image. And that's not the same. That's not the same as actually taking time to paint. So just so we're clear, like, I would not ever um, mint one of these as an NFT, but all you got to do is hit complete when you're done. I know I'm literally just fucking telling you how to do a NFT scam, but what I want to do is try to highlight if you see something like this, especially if you see something with an at on it that's not the artist at, um, or you see a an image that's very clearly a pit crew, and you'll know because when you look at pit crews, they all fit a theme. They are all made to be profile pictures, basically. Some of them are made to be double profile pictures, but they're all made to be profile pictures. So... When you, when you scroll through, you will see. And if you see these and you look at these and you're like, okay, this is a cookie cutter. You can usually tell because they're like this. They're like posed in a certain way where they're just staring at the camera. Um, so if you see something like this and, and it's minted as an N NFT, just know that this is not... What the heck is that? Jeez. Just know that this is not, um, this is not original art that the artist is selling legitimately. This is a stolen pit crew. So just know that's that's one of those things, and you can make if you're if you're interested and you're trying to get like a like a bored ape, uh, uh, just and you just, I'm not talking about to mint as an NFT. I'm saying if you just want a bored ape like um, what's it called uh, profile picture, you just want to look like one of the kids. Uh, I think it's ugly ape is the one they call it on Pit Crew. It's the one that I like a lot. Oh, it's it's with a U. Yeah, this. So you can literally <laughs> NFT ape generator. So some of y'all are trolling the red ape NFT discord with my pit crew, and I 100% condone that here. I took off the climate as a treat. Uh, I think taking off their, their tag. I already got banned twice. Carry on my legacy, you brave and beautiful bastards. This was made by nobody. Y'all can stop pestering me, lol. I'm done updating this. They're very bad for the environment. <coughs> If anyone who knows who made the picture of the NFTs making out, please put it in my TikTok comments so I can credit them. That's funny. Um, a Wired article about NFTs and how it hurts the earth, which is great. I actually really, I love that this artist did this. Also, way to go to this artist. This is sick. So they've made this thing uh, for a while. You might actually have caught a video where I used this NFT or this, this ape as my, as my profile picture. Uh, he talks like this, or no, he talks like this. You get that, ba 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 ba. Um, yeah, I'm I'm giving myself a wave right now. But if you didn't know, the way that I'm doing uh, this little alien guy down here is that I made an Urkin right here in Pit Crew, and I made one with a mouth closed and one with mouth open, and then I uploaded it to Reactive, which is a server that hosts um, reactive images for Discord. And then they will give you a uh, a um, 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 uh, what's it called? They will give you a oh a URL that you can put into your OBS, and that will actually put this image up on your screen. And so that's how I've been able to do these little VTuber streams. Is I just make a I make two pit crews, one with the mouth open. And one with the mouth closed. And then as a result, you know, you upload those two and it just animates. And it's only it's only animating based on um, my voice feedback through Discord. So that's pretty cool. It's pretty simple. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> None of those. Fuckboy hat. Blue. Because why not? Everyone else does ugly blue. At Jose. Yo mama, fuck NFTs. You see what I mean? Like, this is the thing. It immediately got a really bad rep because of, for one, scammers. Scammers fucking ruined this. Like, people hate NFTs because of fucking scammers. But I'll show you. So I just I just generated that one, right? And it's kind of, it's just kind of fun. It's just a neat little, you know, image download. It's down here. Close that up. I'll show you right now. Maybe I won't show you. I don't even know what kind of files I got in my folder. 
um, downloads. See, there it is. And just like that, I have an image. Now, if I wanted to, <clears throat> I'm not going to because it's incredibly unethical. I'm pretty sure it's it's it is illegal. It's you're stealing someone's art. Um, but if I wanted to, I could take this. This is technically kind of an original image. Uh, I didn't do the art, so it would be me stealing. But I did technically uh, design this. I put the hat on him. I chose the color. I chose the mouth. I chose the eyes. Like, technically, this is a unique image. But it's not unique to me, which is the thing. Um, so if you're minting this kind of shit, stop. Fucking stop. You're literally killing the rest of us actual artists. Just go do a Jackson Pollock. Just go fucking slap some paint on a canvas. Put that up as an NFT. If you're trying to make easy money, go do something easy like that. You know what I mean? Stop fucking with our legit bread and butter, though, because you're really fucking hurting real artists when you do that shit. It's usually just for bigger creators to get more money and oftentimes not do the due diligence of correctly taking care of the community that invests NFTs and actually doing the perks uh -huh. instead of just like, here's my million and run away with the big money bag. But don't you think this could also help small creators? I, I would actually argue that NFTs can actually help small creators to be able to get started. Um, now, I would argue that she may be right. But once again, <laughs> we can go back here. And if you want to, I think, I'm not sure. Let me see. If I go back and look at this first one and I check it out. Can I see when it was minted? File type... Uh, the first NFT minted by Adam Poole, the York artist based in Northern California, created in virtual reality. This painting and the others, and the other in this collection, demonstrate the journey from ancient cave paintings to the digital canvas of VR. First edition NFT, Adam Michael Poole, 2022. I can't see when this was minted. Oh wait, yes, February 19th, 2022. Gummy Worm Jim listed this NFT for sale for $100. So. February 20, February 19th this is when this happened and this is this is the date today it's April 23rd so it's been a few months and none of these have sold which is okay that's totally fine uh, currently like I said there's a big pushback against nfts and I understand I do understand that um, if you look for this you will find no shortage of images and no shortage of it's literally just like everybody. You can get t-shirts. You can get NFTs that say fuck NFTs. Actually, that might be a fun painting. Maybe I should do a painting that says fuck NFTs and sell it as an NFT. <laughs> that's good. I like that, actually. That's funny as fuck. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you get the idea. Like People are not necessarily happy with NFTs, and it's largely because of the fact that it's it's considered right now it's just too it's open too much to predatory scamming um, there are too many people who are just free to upload an image what i appreciate about voice and this is this is one of the things that i really like every time that i upload one of these they make me um digitally sign a thing that says this is mine like this is my art if this is not my art you guys are free to sue me because i'm selling art that doesn't belong to me um so one thing I like about voice is it does seem to have, it's not, it's not perfect. Obviously you can still absolutely grab a pit crew, upload it and say, Oh yeah, I promise you, this is my art. Um, and it's, it could be argued that you're right, but technically we all know you're wrong. You're stealing art. Um, there might not even be a law in place to punish people for doing that yet, but there should be, and there will be soon. I'm, I normally hate punitive law. I'm anti-authoritarian. I don't like that shit. But the fact is, there has to be regulations. There has to be some way for the community to self-govern this shit, because otherwise we're fucked. Like we're we're never gonna be able to turn this into an industry. Um, and and I don't know. Like maybe it doesn't need to be. Maybe maybe it shouldn't be. I don't fucking know. I'm an artist. I literally don't know about the ecology of all this. I don't know about the ecology. I don't know about the uh, economy of all of it. All I know is that I'm putting up paintings for the low low price of 100 bucks. If you come and buy one, you will support me. I will not die of starvation. Um, but, I mean, it's such a deep discussion because what a weird, complex issue. I could just not. Like, I could have just decided not to mint NFTs, not to get involved with it in it at all. Um, I think what, what really ultimately pushed me to do it was that I am an artist, and I've been painting for a very long time. 
and being able to paint in VR was huge because I didn't have to like go out and buy more materials. I didn't have to worry about wasting materials. So that's huge. Um, having a waste less painting process, a wasteless painting process, and then having um, a service that says that it is um, ecologically or, you know, um, environmentally friendly, uh, that mixed with obviously the fact that I have not been able to pay the bills in a very long time, just kind of all piled up. And I was like, all right, let's mint some NFTs and see what happens. But it puts me in a very interesting place because now I'm in a perspective to say, I know exactly how NFTs, uh, affect small creators. Um, like we've seen that already with, with people, with creators and musicians using it as a form of fundraising and then using that as a way of being able to do additional work. And with a lot of the smart contract stuff, there's potentially a way for creators to have more liquidity where they're only... Now I see what she's saying here. She's right. If I take these paintings and I start drawing up contracts where it's really nice, where it has like a legit thing, I'm like, look, this is this is the description. I'm gonna give you this NFT. I will send you a, a certificate of authenticity if you want something physical. I got this, I got a t-shirt for you, I got some shit that I made, I have, I'll shout you out in one of my videos, you know what I mean, like, that kind of stuff, I see what she means by that. So if any of you guys are interested in that kind of thing, and you're watching, you've watched this far into the VOD, please let me know, just be like, yeah, I'll, I'll buy an NFT if you fucking shout me out in a video or something, but like, what she's saying, it has merit, I don't know necessarily how much it helps the smallest of the small creators, it probably helps smaller creators, that's for sure only selling a part of the assets they're raising um you know they're raising some funds and if the content does really well they're able to reap some of those benefits from that as well so i, I actually would argue it's going to be a really important tool in the future to smart to help small creators that's fair and if any creators out there want to get a lot of money invest in goose ass <laughs> um yeah don't invest in goose ass invest in some of my paintings if you guys want to um, that's pretty much the only cloying for, for sales I'm going to do here. Cause I really, like I said, I haven't promoted this. I don't know how to, I'm just a painter. I'm not a, I'm not an art promoter. <laughs> and you will be rich. Sorry, Thanks sorry. Ludwig. That's true. Uh, if you invest in my paintings, you might be rich. You will be rich. I don't know if you saw this video. <laughs> You'll be rich in drop. culture. Well, actually, is there anything else with NFTs? I mean, we saw that people were really concerned. Is there anything else that you, that you, is there anything you really want us to not do? If you're so if you're just to, to finally drive home the point, we're almost done here. I really appreciate you guys watching this far to drive home the point. Finally, the concerns that she's discussing is all the people who have been saying fuck NFTs. And the reason that they have been saying that is because, like I said, it's just too open to scams. It's just too open to people who are not fucking artists. There are people selling NFTs who don't make art. They just steal art. And that's not OK. So for that reason, I do see why people are so concerned with nfts because you know we definitely understood it was polarizing there was definitely a lot of feedback that like that for as many people as there were excited about it there were definitely uh, sig significant uh detractors as right. well. <laughs> i think it's a blight in the gaming space to even be i will say that i if i was ludwig i would not have used the word blight i feel like that is a little bit too harsh of a word it's not a blight in the a blight would imply that like having NFTs in the gaming space is going to destroy gaming or something. It's like an infection that's eating us from the inside out um, in the gaming space. People are jaded because they don't want to own digital assets anymore. That's the issue. So what he's discussing here, I think, is <clears throat> it opens up another discussion that I would love to have, which is that it's not about the gaming space and NFTs. It's about the fact that. Um, that gamers are sick and tired of buying incomplete products in digital form. We're tired of buying DLC. We're tired of buying characters and skins. We're tired of buying your shit that you didn't give us with the game. And so for that, we're, gamers are immediately jaded to believe that a digital project product is going to be a scam. Oh, you're going to sell me some fucking digital thing to fucking shine me on and steal some money out of my wallet? Like, I totally understand that. So I, f I think that's where he's coming from. I don't know that I would use the word blight because I don't think that NFTs are a blight on the gaming space. I think that they are, um, they are something that we need to move forward with with caution, and something that I think a lot of people are uh, are just jaded against because of the proliferation of unfinished games being sold to us uh, on the hopes of us spending money on DLC and digital assets. Involved in NFTs mm -hmm. and usually like 
I even if you were somewhat interested in the technology, it's not worth entering the space uh, because of how much backlash you'd receive from the mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. uh, is what it feels like in gaming. And so that's that's absolutely true. I will say that because <clears throat> when I made this, my first thought was like, wow, I made an NFT site. I'm going to be an artist. I'm going to sell my paintings on the Internet. It's going to be so cool. Uh, immediately, as soon as you share any of this shit, people are like, fuck you, you fucking scammer. Get your shit out of my face. You know what I mean? Um, and I think that that's, that's what he's talking about. People are really immediately jaded to this kind of thing. And in that sense, uh, the scamming is part of what it is. And the thing is, there are people that will argue like, well, the scammers are technically like, you know, small or small creator. Maybe they're poor people. Like, no, that doesn't matter. There are poor people that are actually working to create art. And so by scamming them, by stealing their art and, and minting them as NFTs, you're, you're fucking over yourself. You're fucking over this industry that might actually have a chance to do something. And you're essentially just like fucking over your customer, obviously. So I see why gamers are jaded about this. And like, like I said, a lot of it has to do with the proliferation of DLC and uh, game developers sent, uh, charging us way too fucking much money for unfinished assets. So, so nobody touches it. And anyone who does, um, well, usually just gets a lot of shit. So that's, that's one reason. But then also, I again, it just feels like it's usually for rich getting richer. Yep. And I think I agree. When, you, when all the dust settles and NFTs are involved and they're on Twitter and they're here and it's crypto.com and you can't look anywhere without NFTs, I think 95% of all the value of the purchase NFTs will go to bigger creators who are already millionaires. And then the small creators, I don't think will profit that much. That's true. That is also most monetization changes. Cause that's just kind of how it works. Damn. Hitting us with the big truth bomb at the end. Like, yeah, to be honest, like this is all a scam, but technically isn't anything a scam under capitalism, which is, which is just rich getting richer. Yeah. Well, I, I, well, anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll check in in mm -hmm. a few years and we'll, we'll okay. see. Okay. Okay. Five okay. Years. okay. Five, Five years. years. Okay. In. Even, even two years. I, I think, okay. In, I think Two years we're going to we'll we're going to be really careful. Sure. I, I, I think that you are going to be so sorry for keeping for, sorry to keep pausing and talking about this stuff. But I really do want to dissect this. So she if you guys don't know who Susan Wojcicki is, she is the CEO of YouTube. Um, she is a Silicon Valley mogul of the highest order. Um, by that, I mean the company Google was founded in her home. She talks about this in this interview. Um, like she is a tech bro from the ground up. So when she says that we're going to check in on NFTs in five or even two years, I kind of do believe her. I kind of do think that she has something to say here. Um, <clears throat> and like she's saying, they're being really careful. I believe that YouTube is being very careful about the way that they monetize NFT content. Um, I don't know that it's going to be enough to break the stigma that NFT content currently has. Uh, what I will say is that because she is a CEO, because she is so ingrained in YouTube and Google, when she says that NFTs are going to be a viable option in two years, I, I believe her because um, that's one of those things where like if Elon Musk said it, like when Elon Musk said the thing about Dogecoin, right, and everybody freaked out and bought Dogecoin, don't get me wrong, I... Crypto is one of the things where the blockchain is still struggling to find, ha figure out how to be uh, environmentally friendly. So I wasn't trying to get in on the crypto thing, but like when when Elon Musk said, "Hey, you guys should buy Dogecoin," that shit skyrocketed because people knew this guy is so rich that whatever he supports is more than likely not gonna fail. And if it does, I mean, if it does, he's ready for the loss, which is kind of the thing that we're always we're always risking when we listen to rich people, because. If this shit that they are that they're hoping for doesn't pan out, we get left holding the bag while they still have plenty of money, you know, to move on from their failed ventures. So that's a big thing to take into account here as well. Okay, with what we do with NFTs, that's my prediction in okay. two years and in five years because that's our goal. Our goal is really to use it to protect creators, protect creator assets, and enable new forms for them to be able to get liquidity and raise money mm -hmm. and. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how it if goes. If I'm wrong, yeah. you have to buy the goose ass for me for one thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> if you're wrong, no. If, if you're wrong, hey, if you've if you've gotten this far in the video and you just want to fucking spend some money for a meme, head on over to voice.com forward slash gummyworm gym. Uh, buy yourself an NFT. 
You don't have to buy the, the expensive one that's a picture of my, my ugly mug. You can buy any of the cheap paintings. Uh, I will be putting up more paintings soon. I don't know. I just wanted to stream for, for a little bit this morning and talk about NFTs and the kind of the situation that I find myself in and why this discussion actually kind of had so much to do with like why I was so, uh, excuse me, why I was so drawn into this discussion. Sorry. Oh, if I'm wrong. Oh, yeah, okay. If, if I'm wrong. wrong you buy yeah, goose yeah, yeah. For okay, 1, sure, sure. If I'm wrong, I'll buy a goose ass for a thousand dollars. Yeah, no problem. I'm. Uh, Susan Wojcicki, if you're if you're watching this and you and you feel like buying a, an NFT, this is the only NFT that's ever going to be minted of my face. I am a Native American artist. I am hopefully going to continue to evolve my art. Someday, maybe this will be like the the collection of my hero Jean Michel Basquiat. And you'll be like, oh my god, I bought one of Adam Poole's original arts. In fact, I bought the $1,000 Selfish Two-Faced art NF Artist NFT. Just saying, Susan, if you want to help small creators, it's it's any of these are for sale. 